Hi, this is Tyler with fluiditystudio.com, and today I'm going to be going over another one of my WordPress plugins called Payflow Donate. And what this allows you to do is process um, donations or contributions directly on your website. You no longer have to send people to your PayPal account uh, or send them away to PayPal to make the payment and then back to your site. So this allows you to do it everything right on your website. Now, in order to use this plugin, you will need to sign up for some different features at PayPal, some different accounts. So what you're going to need is a PayPal Payments Advanced or Pro account. I recommend just using the Advanced because obviously, as you can see here, it's less expensive. This one's only $5 a month. And it allows you to, it says right here, your customers check out directly on your website rather than link to PayPal. And the Pro has that feature plus a lot more that if you're not needing those extra features, then I would just go with the PayPal Payments Advanced. Okay, so you need that. And then secondly, you're going to need a the to sign up for a Payflow Gateway account. And that's Payflow Link. And I would use again Payflow Link because it's going to work for you and it's it's going to there's no monthly fee and it's only 10 cents per transaction. So going over all the fees, you will have five dollars a month with PayPal Payments Advanced, plus you're going to have your 2.9 percent plus 30 cents like you always do on any transaction and you'll have an extra 10 cents per transaction running through the gateway but you need that gateway in order to process the payments directly on your website and then another thing you'll need to do to test everything is to sign up for a developer account and that's developer.paypal.com and that is free you can sign up using your existing uh, paypal email and then in there you can create a business account and a uh, buyer account and those are just dummy accounts that you can test your uh, your payflow gateway with so after you continue with that after you do all that then you can go back and um, we'll go back and talk about the plugin itself let's just talk about the front end first so what you'll see here um, these will be titleless this will be um, empty this will be empty and these won't show up when the plugin is um, installed by default. You'll have to enter in the title for this and some verbiage here. And then you can select for some, from some preset options, or you can choose to leave those blank. The default will always be on other, and they can enter in their amount they want to uh, contribute or donate. And then this feature was an added one for my client that I originally created this plugin for. So in my, in my uh, plugin that I distribute out to everybody, this will not be added in. And then you'll have your personal information and you can change this title here as well from the admin. You have your first name, last name, phone number, all that good stuff, and your billing information. None of this can be changed because it's billing information and it's necessary for processing the cards. So that's the basic form. If you go to, once you download, pay for the plugin, download it and install it, you'll see a Payflow Donate area in the dashboard click on that and what you will have is the giving levels at the first part of the plugin and um, like I said by default none of these will be checked so you can check these and hit save settings if you want some pre predefined options people can choose from they'll always have the other option where they can enter their own amount and then you have the amount title which is online giving which I've entered and that's that and then you'll see select amount design and, and designation, which in this case we're using this. But you can enter that text in here. And then the donator title, which is this area, personal information. You can change that as well. So you can say donator information, contributor information, personal information, whatever you want to use. And the next is your payflow user, vendor, and partner, and password. This is what you're going to get when you sign up for the Payflow Link account. And that will connect with your pay, PayPal Advanced Payments account that you set up, which is this one. So when you get that, your user and your vendor will be the same. This is the PayPal Manager. Once you sign up for the Payflow Link account, you're going to be logging in through manager.paypal.com. Now, your user in this case, um, is not necessarily unle necessary unless you create additional users that will have access to the account. The only ones you need are your partner, 
which is PayPal, your merchant ID, and your password. But in the plugin, I use the user, so you'll put, you'll put the user and the um, vendor as the same, and your partner will be PayPal. You'll have to enter that in as well, and then your password. And your partner must be PayPal because that's the merchant you're using. And the next option is unchecking or checking live, live or test mode. So uh, never check these at the same time. Just check one or the other. And if you're test mode, if you want to test things, then you obviously want to put it in test mode. And then you're going to use your uh, test account that you set up through developer.paypal.com. And then the next part is the PayPal manager. This says copy and paste the following links into the designated fields in your PayPal manager account. So once you set up the account, you'll log into your PayPal manager. Here's a link to it right here. And then you can enter in your error URL and your return URL. And I'll show you what that looks like. I have some screen captures. So once you log in, you're going to go to your settings, your setup. And you want to make sure if you're testing, if you have your um, plugin set in test mode, then the transaction process mode needs to be in test as well. And the error URL is what happens when the form errors out for whatever particular reason. If their card wasn't right or they had information wasn't correct, then it needs to go to an error URL. And that is going to be the error URL that you have here. So you're going to copy and paste that. It's going to pull the exact location for you. So all I have to do is copy that and paste that in this area okay and then your paypal email address of course is the email that you signed up with through paypal and your sandbox email is the email that you created uh, when you set up your developer account so that's going to be the um, business account not the buyer account but the business account and then you want to make sure you check these um, particular ones here uh, your name, all that good stuff. The CSC is the um, verification code on the back of the card. You need to check that as well. And you can leave the shipping information all unchecked because for this particular plugin, we're not selling anything. We're actually taking donations, so there is no need for shipping information. And then the next one is a section payment confirmation. You're going to check on my website as show the confirmation page on my website. And then this is your, your return URL. So enter return URL. That is this one here. So you'll copy that and you will paste that in there. And then this says choose link. If you're not sure, leave this at link. And so you enter that. And the next part is at the very bottom and it's security options. Now these are what I set mine to. Uh, everything process is just fine, but there is light, medium, and full. And I have the AVS is the um, address verification. So you want to make sure that obviously you're checking their address with the card they're using. And then the CSC is the um, security number on the back of the card. And then you, you want to make sure that you have an able secure token because this is what's going to connect with PayPal from your site to get a secure token that allows that payment to be processed through PayPal. And then you'll hit your save changes. Okay. So I'm going to place my um, Payflow user and vendor, which, I, like I said, are the same. I'm going to put that back in there, and I'm going to save it. And we'll um, come back after that. Okay. I've done that. Mine, again, like I said, is in live mode because we are done testing. And it is working live. And the last thing you'll need to know is the PayFlow form shortcode. So you're going to place this shortcode in the page you want. Now, when you, um, when you install the plugin, it does create a uh, payment confirmation page for you that automatically has a shortcode, and that will take you from that form to a confirmation page. But you, I, I left this so you can call your initial page whatever you want, whether it's donations, it's give, you know, whatever you want to call that. You can create that page and then copy and paste both from bracket to bracket here that short code and paste it in the page. And then the last part of it is um, there's a, there are HTML files that are created that that uh, store that secure token for each 
each time someone goes through the form, a security token is created and an HTML page is created. Now, those pages don't get deleted unless you come back in and delete them. So um, eventually these files will start to take up space after a long period of time. Now, they're not big files because it's very small HTML code that goes in that file. So they're not going to take up too much space. But after a while, you're probably going to want to delete them. So you click the box, the checkbox below, and click Save Settings to clear the folder. The current number of files li will be listed below, and then we'll go to zero. So right now, I haven't done any. So they're, they're currently, it's zero HTML files are uh, created in this directory. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and look at check the form out here. And I'm going to just select, I can select 20 bucks. That's easy. And I'm going to go ahead and fill out some information here. Johnny test, and I'll just do a number of five, 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 whatever. I should actually do it. Like that, okay? And we'll do our buyer. Uh, email account, which is our test email account we created through the PayPal uh, developer. And then we can do, we can do well, West, West Main, just a test. And we can do San Jose or something. California. I'm not sure what the zip code is there. Um, I think it's that, but anyway, we're just testing. So I hit continue, and this will take me to a confirmation page. So it shows my total amount. This obviously is not going to be a part of the main plugin. This is a part of my uh, the, the plugin I created for my client. And uh, you have your billing info, your first name, last name, street, city, state, and zip code, you know the amount. Now, if you wanted to fix any of this stuff, then you would go back. Now you're verifying all of this. So when you hit confirm, uh, you know it's correct. Then down below, you'll see an option to either pay with your uh, checkout with your PayPal account, or you can enter your card number. Now in testing mode, I have found that the card numbers get rejected, but they're not, um, it's the test numbers you would use. Now you, want, you don't want to use real card numbers when you're in testing. But you, there are test card numbers you can use, like uh, four and then 15 ones. So it's 16 digits total. And then you can put in an expiration date, anything from anything further on from where you're at. So go a year out from the month you're in. And then like one, two, three is a test. But um, it will fail because I don't know why necessarily. They're, they, they're supposed to process through, but it failed for me every time. And then I would log in the PayPal manager and see that it declined it. And it would give me different reasons. Some say just declined, some based on the type of card I was using. But um, I've tested this in live mode processing my own card, and it worked perfectly. So um, I'll just show you what happens when we check out with PayPal. That the information does carry over. You can see that it's $20.00. And then, of course, I can sign in with... This is how you would test if you were in test mode. You would actually sign in with your um, dummy account that you created through your PayPal developer, and you would use your buyer account in this case because you in your PayPal manager, you entered in your um, your uh, company, you know, your uh, merchant account, I guess. You have, your, you have a buyer, and then you have a business account. So you, you would have the business account as the account that's going to receive the money and then the buyer account you created is what you would log in with and then once you confirmed all that and paid for it it'll drop you back to your web back to the website but that's that's the only way you're gonna be able to test in live mode this works perfectly when you process a credit card so i'm going to go back so here i would enter in my credit card and it detects what card it is whether it's visa discover mastercard american express whatever it detects that and then it will send you to a confirmation right here. It'll load a confirmation page in here in this area. And it will 
give you the uh, ID of that transaction and the amount that you you purchased, you know, the amount that you gave and all that information. And of course, you'll get a confirmation email from PayPal as well that it went through. Um, and let's see. Oh, the other feature I need to show you is in the PayPal manager. So I'm going to pull that up. So I go to my PayPal manager. When you log in, your partner is PayPal, and then you use your merchant and your password, and they'll log in. So I'm going to do that and get to where I need to show you next. Okay, so once you're logged in, you're going to click on your service settings, and then your setup is just like this information I showed you here. So it's, it's uh, where you're going to enter all that information. But your customize is where you're going to select the type of layout that you're going to use. And it must be layout C. So, and uh, you need your error URL and your, um, let's see, you need the error URL and you need your return URL in order for layout C to work. And it'll give you a warning if you didn't enter those, it'll have a warning up here. But you select layout C and save and publish. And that shows that we're using that layout. So this is the one you need to use in order to uh, use the plugin. So I think that is about it for explaining how the plugin works. It's pretty straightforward. It, uh, it creates the other page for you. So all you have to do is install the plugin, activate it, create a page and put the payflow form short code in that page and it will run. Now, if I come back here and I refresh the page, you'll see that it says I currently have one HTML file created. Okay, so that happened when I actually hit the confirm right here that actually sent the uh, security token to PayPal and came back and it created that HTML page. And that's what actually created this. Now, if I didn't enter my um, vendor information correctly, I would have gotten an error in this little area right here. It would have created a yellow error box and it wouldn't have processed anything because it couldn't communicate with PayPal to get the security token. So you need to make sure that you enter all your um, vendor and your um, user information and your password and all that stuff and make sure your partner is PayPal. Um, otherwise, it won't communicate with the PayFlow gateway and you'll get an error. So once you um, see these, like I said, continue to rise, if you, you want to come in and delete them, all you do is hit the check the button, hit save settings. It loads the page, it loads the PayFlow donate again. And then you go down to the bottom and you'll see that it says HTML files have been deleted. You must click save settings again to reset the option and that will um, reset this and show that it's zero. So I'll hit save settings again. Okay, now it drops me back up to the, I go down to the bottom and now it's zero. Now, I, I pause the video and scroll down because, of course, I don't want my um, my client's information being shown that I entered above for their vendor and user. So um, that's why you're seeing me jump down to the bottom. But um, it, it shows that it's currently back to zero because the HTML file has been deleted. So that's how you'll clear that uh, after a while when you see that number start to get big, then you might want to clear it just so you can conserve space on your server. And that's pretty much it for the... PayPal, the PayFlow Donate plugin. It works great. Uh, I'm very happy that this turned out like it did. Uh, I looked all over uh, for a plugin that worked like this and none did, so I ended up having to create one myself. Uh, the only option for using the PayFlow gateway on a site seems to be in, uh, in shopping carts that you can purchase or get for free and install in WordPress, but nothing that worked for just taking donations. So I hope that uh, you find this useful, and if you purchase the plugin and use it and you enjoy it, then please let me know. Thank you.